everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Irene. Here I have an empty tin can, an old compact, a couple of Kinder Surprise boxes and a wooden ruler. And today I'll show you how to make beautiful Christmas ornaments using all this crap. I'll start with the compact and the first thing I'm doing is removing the residue powder from the compact. I want the hanger to look like a pocket watch top ring. To make it I'm cutting a piece of wire strong enough and bending it into a half ring with straight tips, like a kind of a hairpin. And I'm inserting this pin into the compact. There are slots where it opens and you can insert it there. It can actually hang already. To secure the pin I'll use a piece of twine and first I'm attaching the twine along the compact circumference where the two halves of the compact meet. I'm using super glue here to make it nice and smooth. And after that I'm wrapping the twine around the wire ring. This will make it thicker and it will look nice and textured. And I'll secure the attachment at the same time. Next, I'll prepare the clock faces. I've printed out the faces for all of the ornaments. The template is right there in the description box as usual. And first, I'm staining them with some strong tea. After they are dry, I'm cutting out the face for the pocket watch. I'm applying some water to make it stretch a little and smearing the back side with white glue. And after that, I'm attaching the face right onto the compact, pressing it to fit snugly onto it as it is a little curved, applying more glue on top to seal it and leaving it to dry well. Once dry, I'm painting the watch. I'm using homemade chalk paint here, I've shown this recipe many times and actually this layer works as primer, so you can use what you have on hand and the color doesn't matter much. I'm painting both the upper and the back side. I want to make raised embellishments with outliner paints here, so first I'm drawing the pattern with a pencil. Here you can draw any curved lines and twirls and flowers you like. And after that I'm drawing the lines with an outliner. I'm using a bronze one, but here the color is not important as well, as I'll be painting over it. First I'm drawing the pattern on the back side. Actually it looks good like this already, so you may want to paint it red and draw bronze twirls like this if you wish. But I'm opting for a metallic look, so after the outliner has dried well I'm painting the back side bronze. Once dry I'm turning it upside down and finishing the upper side. I'm drawing little twirls along the entire clock face circumference. I'm also outlining it. And I'm drawing the clock hands with the outliner. You can also buy a cheap board kit with clock hands and attach them here. And painting bronze. After the paint has dried, I'm sealing the watch with a glossy sealer to make it nice and shiny. You can stop here, but I've decided to add some extra shine and vintage feel, so I'll gold leaf the watch. You can use a rub and buff for the same effect here. I'm covering all the areas I want to make brighter with a gilding adhesive and after 5 to 10 minutes when it becomes transparent but is still sticky, I'm attaching gold leaf. Well, actually this is copper leaf as I ran out of gold. I'm pressing the pieces lightly to stick well to the surface and then I'm polishing the watch gently with a soft brush. Once the top side is dry, I'm doing the same on the back side. In order to distress the gold leafing, I'm applying antiquing glaze and wiping the surface with a cloth immediately to get that nice aged look.
In the end, I'm sealing the surface with shellac and here we go! I think the Alt Compact has got a great makeover. The watch looks like a precious antique ornament and you can use it as a vintage decor after Christmas as well. And I love the back side too. You can turn the watch and make it look like a nice vintage medallion on the tree. I'm thinking of adding some rhinestones or pearls for an extra precious look. The next ornament I'll make is a cuckoo clock. I'm cutting the clock face out and then I'll cut the wooden ruler into pieces to make the clock base. You can also use cardboard here. I've got two longer pieces for the sides and a piece for the bottom as well as the short pieces for the roof. I want it to be thicker than the sides so I'm gluing two ruler pieces together here. I have also glued two leftover pieces of another ruler together to make the front and I'm cutting it to size and making the top pointed like on a house. As you can see I'm only using a box knife here, no fancy tools. And once all the parts are cut to size I'll assemble the base. I'm attaching the sides and the bottom to the front, here I ended up using paper strips on the inside in order to secure the joints. And in the very end I'm attaching the roof, it sits flush with the back sides and stands out on the front. I'm cutting two chopsticks to decorate the sides. And I'm adding toothpicks and chopstick pieces under the roof and near the bottom to hide the little gaps here. I'll embellish the clock with some cast decor to make it look like they are carved wood. First I'll make the posts. I have a mold of a street lamp and I'm making the posts and attaching them to the front sides. And then I'm making the lamp embellishment part separately and attaching it right under the roof. I've also made a couple of other cast embellishments, two smaller pieces for the sides and a larger one for the bottom part. Once dry, I'm hot gluing the embellishments to the sides of the clock. Next, I'm painting the clock brown and here I'm using the same technique as on the floor clock which I made for the Nutcracker tiny room recently. After applying the paint, I'm wiping it off immediately with a damp cloth, rubbing the surface intensely to reveal the wood texture. This makes it look like a dark brown stain but works on self-hardening clay and non-porous surfaces as well. I've painted the front and the sides and once dry I'm attaching the clock face to place. I'm decorating the face circumference with a bronze outliner. If you have no outliner on hand, you can make a homemade one using a simple recipe. I'll link the video with it down below as well. And next I'll make some extra elements. I need to add the door for a cuckoo bird of course. I'm cutting it out of two coffee stirrers, making the door around it on top and then I'm gluing the door above the clock face. And I'm adding some more toothpick and coffee stirrer pieces onto the front to decorate it. I'm also hard gluing the bottom rounded embellishment to place and attaching another coffee stirrer here to hide the joint. And in the end, I'm painting all the parts that are still not brown and wiping them just as I did before. I'm painting the clock hands with a bronze outliner. And next I'll make weights for the clock. I thought about using real little pine cones for that purpose, but then I've remembered I had nice little glass pine cones from Dollar Tree laying around and I've decided to use two of them for the clock weights. The pine cones I have are silver and I'm painting them dark orange to have a more vintage feel. I'm cutting two pieces of chain to hang the pine cones and I'm cutting three pieces of wire about two inches long to secure the chain in place and to make the hanging loop for the ornament. 
I'm bending the wire in half, attaching the chain to the resulting pin and inserting it into a hole in the bottom of the clock, which Gary pre-drilled for me. And then I'm bending the wire tips to secure the chain in place. I'm attaching the second chain and securing both wire pieces on the inside with some hot glue. And I'm making the hanging loop just the same way. After that I'm covering the clock with the back side, which I cut out of cardboard just like I did with the front, and I'm painting it brown. Next I'm sealing the whole clock with a glossy sealer, and I'm giving it several layers to get that high glossy antique wood look. I was going to use gold drop and buff on the clock embellishments, but after the first watch was finished I realized the antiqued copper leaf went so well with the pine cones shade, so I'll copper leaf the clock as well. I'm smearing the parts I want to be shiny with the gilding adhesive and after 5 minutes I'm applying copper leaves here and then polishing the parts to make them shiny. Here the copper leaf is a real game changer as without it the clock looks a little bit too dark for a Christmas ornament. After I finish gilding I'm applying the antiquing lace just as I did for the pocket watch ornament. And I'm sealing it with shellac, of course. Finally, I'm attaching the pine cones by threading the hangers through the chains, and here we go! I think this type of clock just shouts Christmas fairy tale. Can you imagine this used to be an old ruler? You can make it as a surprise box or even a tiny advent calendar if you make the backside open. Then you can hide little gifts or sweets or even notes with wishes inside this ornament. I was short of time and didn't do this, but I really like this idea. And the hanging pine cones are so cute! If you use real pine cones for weights, you can gild them gold or copper, they'll shine as bright as glass ones then. And the third project for today is a tin can alarm clock ornament. I'll use a tin can for this, and first I'll secure the sharp edge of the can. I'm cutting the edge in many places with wire cutters, like petals, and then I'm bending them inside the can with pliers. I'll use Kinder Surprise toy containers to make the clock bells. I'm cutting the covers from the containers. You may want to use just one container and cut the bottom two, but two covers make it perfectly even. Next I'm making 4 holes with a thick needle in the tin can, where I want the bells and the legs to sit. I'll make these from spare screws. I'm screwing all the screws into the holes I've made inside out. And to fix them, I'm hot gluing the heads of the screws on the inside. This is to make them sit straight, without any wiggling. To make the legs, I've attached a couple of wooden beads onto the lower screws. And to attach the bells, first I'm covering the upper screws with some hot glue. Here you want to leave the very top uncovered to be able to attach the bell here later. And then I'm pressing the glue around the screw with my fingers while the glue is still warm. I'm making holes in the middle of the bells with a thick needle and trying them out. I didn't like how the legs looked with the bells, so I removed the beads and made the legs thinner by pressing some hot glue around the screws, just like on the top screws. And after that I attached small wooden beads onto the screw tips. I'm making the handle of the clock out of wire, bending it into a curve, and I'll attach two beads onto the wire tips. To make the handle a bit firmer, as the wire I have is a little flimsy, I'm adding one more piece of wire and after that I'm wrapping the handle with the twine I have already used for the pocket watch. I 
After some thought, I've decided to wrap the legs with the twine as well to make them look more neat and finished. I'm cutting out the clock face and also cutting a cardboard backing for it as the tin can bottom is not flat. I'm hot gluing the back into the tin can and after that I'm painting the insides of the bells and the clock body as this will be hard to make after the assembly. I'm using homemade chalk paint here again and this time the color does matter as I'm going to make the clock red. After everything has dried I'll assemble the clock. I'm attaching the bells to the handle. And after that I'm attaching the top part to the clock body by pushing the screw tips into the holes in the bells and then rotating the bells a little to push them even further. Once they hold well, I'm securing the handle on the inside with some hot glue and holding the bells in the right position until the glue has hardened. And after that I'm finally painting the clock, giving it several layers of paint. I'm making the last layer using a bright red paint and blending this shade with the darker base color to make a nice color transition. I'm making the frame for the clock face and to do this I'm cutting two thin cardboard rings which fit the face on the inner side and are slightly bigger on the outer side. And I'm gluing them together to make the frame. Once dry, I'm painting it bronze. I'm also painting the clock handle and the legs bronze to fit the frame. And after that, I'm finally attaching the face to the clock. I'm sealing the face with a glossy sealer. And once dry, I'm gluing the frame onto the face. I'm using super glue to keep it neat. I want this clock to be double sided, so I'm cutting the circle and the stripe out of vintage scrapbook sheet of paper and making the lining for the inside of the can. It looks like a round paper box, a little smaller than the can itself, to be able to place it inside the can. I'm hot gluing the lining into the can and decorating the edge with a piece of twine. I had only black twine of the desired thickness on hand, so I'm sealing it with acrylic sealer and after drying, painting it browns. To decorate the inside of the clock, I'll use a small bottle brush tree and I'm making two trees out of one by cutting it in half and pruning the lower part to look like another little bottle brush tree. I'm hot gluing the trees into the clock and then decorating them with plastic pearls. I'm drawing the clock hands with the bronze outliner and finally I'm sealing the clock. I've decided to add a little green bow onto the clock handle. And I'm adding some fake snow and mica onto the bells. This makes it look more Christmassy and also I'm hiding the ribs of the Kinder Surprise caps under the snow. I'm 
I love those diorama alarm clocks which you can find on Pinterest and I always wanted to make one but I don't have any vintage alarm clock which could work for it and it would be too heavy for a Christmas tree anyway so this fake alarm clock could be a great replacement. You can feel the inside as you like, making it more or less elaborate and I think having an ornament which you can use in two ways, like a normal alarm clock ornament and like a diorama ornament is such a great idea. And you can also use this clock as Christmas decor around the house as well, just add a third support to stand straight there. Well, I hope you liked today's ideas. Please let me know what you think of these ornaments down below. Thanks for being here and we'll see you in my next one. Bye!